Oh, I think we're working. Here we are. It's my first like by myself video. So bear with me. Sometimes I'm not sure where to look. I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at the camera. So bear with me because this is my first one officially. Last time I wrangled my groom, uh, Ashley Sundin. I wrangled her into doing the video because I was completely spazzing out before <laughs> we did it because it feels kind of awkward to just talk into the camera and not see everyone. But um, speaking of that, I have to say, I've been absolutely blown away with the response that everyone has had to this Team Tate TV. I can't believe it. We're over 1,200 members in only three days. So that's just like amazing. And I was laughing with one of my students and I'm kind of telling everybody this story that it's like I have a new puppy and I can't stop like being around it or playing with it or I'll like ride two horses and then I'll have to like go and check because like reading everyone's stories and getting all their pictures of their own horses. I just love it. I love it. It's just really, you know, especially in a time like this right now where things are, you know, divided and, you know, there's just unrest in the world and it just was so fun to feel such a connection with this whole community and I just can't thank you enough for being here. So that's really exciting. Um, but one of the big things we wanted to talk about was Laura Klecker, who is a student for a bunch of years now. She lives in Aiken and she had a question about one of the videos she saw. And of course, you'll be able to see all the full versions when you sign up on Team Tate Academy and you sign up to be either a working student or an apprentice or a trainer. Um, you'll get to see the full videos of all of those um, that we're posting the little sneak peeks to. But one, her qu I'll read her question. And it was, JJ, you talk about not leaving the mounting block without knowing what those hind legs are doing. Some horses that I ride coming from all different backgrounds that are new to dressage, I find it very difficult for me to feel the hind legs until I am happy with the balance and have developed some understanding of connection. Do you have any advice for closing the gap in my riding and gaining a feeling for the hind limbs more quickly? My typical go-tos are turn on the forehand, leg yields, and transitions. Thanks, Laura. So, Laura, I can tell you've been a student for quite a while because, yes, turn on the forehand is something I go to kind of like all the time. I really... Like get on my, I check my girth, I get on my horses. I probably give them a sugar because that's part of what we do. Uh, and then I start walking and I really walk a long time. All my horses, um, you know, walk for at least 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, my favorite thing to do is walk outside the ring, you know, kind of get myself together with the horse, let them see the fresh air and, you know, the, the out of the ring, you know, that's so great to be able to see the world. And at the end of the day, being a good dressage horse is about being a nice horse to ride in general. So I like to get mine out as much as possible and walking. But the moment I leave that mounting block, I want to feel the timing of those hind legs, how are they feeling? Do they feel stiff? Is one walking shorter than the other? You know, what? how is that horse feeling? Is the back dropped? Is the back humped up? Always be careful of the humped up back. <laughs> um, for sure go to a turn on the forehand as soon as possible if you feel that. Um, but all, in all seriousness, I right away when I leave the mounting block, I wanna feel that the horse's rib cage is really swinging. And you feel that like if you're walking down the hall or walking down the, uh, um, the track, you're going to feel, you know, the horse's rib cage going in and out and in and out. So what I first start to do is I swing not only with that rhythm, because it's really important to not disturb the horse's balance, but to be with and in the horse's rhythm and kind of in his body. And so I ask the horse to start swinging his barrel 
actually a little bit more. So that's the first thing. And of course, because the stifle is like a, like a pendulum joint, the barrel has to be out of the way in order for that hind leg to go farther under. And so right away, I start to feel, you know, right hind, left hind, right hind, left hind. And I ask the horse to march on and give me their best walk possible. Of course, the first walk from the mounting block is going to be probably a little different than the walk in 10 minutes because the horse will have warmed up and starts to swing the back and I let them walk on the buckle, you know, as long as that's safe. But I always say walk on as long a rein that is safe. You know, so some we don't give the buckle to because they're a little naughty. So first I right away swing with the horse's rib cage. I get those hind legs really stepping up underneath the horse's body. And then if I still feel like mm, those hind legs aren't really answering my question to really step up under the horse's center of gravity, then I for sure go to the turn on the forehand. So I loved it that that, you know, you kind of already answered your question in your question. <laughs> so, um, but I love turn on the forehand because in a real basic essence, I want the horse to understand that my right calf uh, controls and energizes the right hind leg and my left calf controls and energizes the left hind leg. So basically like his two hind legs become my two legs. And so that's where I right away start to connect that to, you know, getting the horse's back up, getting the horse's pelvis to start swinging, getting the hind legs to engage. When you can control three quarters of the body or two thirds of the horse's body, the neck, you know, sort of makes itself. We always talk about like, oh, I want the horse on the bit, you know, and of course we want the horse on the bit, but that doesn't start with the bit. That starts with the activity and the unconstrained energy that comes from those hind legs. So right away, I start walking away from the mounting block. I have a sense of, oh, what are those hind legs doing? I make that barrel start swinging. I make those hind legs. I really want as much over track as possible. Of course, the walk usually at the end of the ride is gonna be looser and bigger and more relaxed than the one in the beginning. But that's always our goal, right? To like get on the horse and ride away, have that kind of relaxed way of, of moving. So that is the answer to that question. And sometimes if I, you know, what, what happens if I'm on a young horse and they don't know turn on the forehand yet? Sometimes I will even start to teach them a little bit those yields from the ground, um, what that means, you know, horses by nature move into pressure. And so we have to teach them in that moment to move away from that pressure in the leg and, you know, release in their rib cage and raise the back and start to breathe and drop their neck and be more relaxed. Um, so yeah, so that's the answer to that question. And I see there's already like 52 of you on here. I'm so happy you're here. And again, I just love everyone's stories. It has been like, I'm really trying to work, work on my horses because we also have a show coming up next weekend, but it's like really hard not to stare at the Team Tate TV all day and like read um, everyone's stories. And I mean, it's really actually been really moving and very touching to me that so many people have been connected through Team Tate. So I just really had no idea we've made such a um, great community already. And so it's really fun to, you know, share it with everybody here. So I also wanna um, give you guys a tiny little tour. I'm gonna lift the phone up. And so that right back there, I'm sitting on my back porch, but that's my covered arena back there. I, I don't know if you could hear it, but my wonderful husband, Richard, is um, back there taking some more panels. We have these plastic panels that um, is really great in the wintertime, but it's really hot already in South Carolina. So uh, they're taking the panels down. So I hope 
uh, it's not too loud, but they're right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's the, there's the arena. So even when I'm not in the barn, I'm actually here all the time. I, I know who's kicking, you know? So when we talk about like, these are behind the scenes, this is like legit behind the scenes, actually like behind the scenes and down the hill <laughs> to be exactly precise. Um, couple of announcements we need to make again is that the Team Tate Academy is going to be like open for business and the doors are open and you'll be able to sign up for your different level tiers and that's on Friday at the 12th at 12. So I was like, I know someone, I can't remember who it was now, told me I should have made it 12-12 on the 12th, but I was not that clever and I just didn't think of it. So it's Friday the 12th at 12, the doors of our new academy uh, open. And so then you'll be able to see all the details, all the pricings, you know, for all the different level tiers. So the working student is going to be a weekly video usually of me riding and talking while I'm riding, explaining different exercises. Um, I believe there's already going to be six in there when you start um, because we sort of already started and we just wanted to have a library in there for when you get in there, you're going to be able to kind of get through those six videos right away. And then um, we're still working out the details, but we think every Monday there'll be a new video uh, that comes out. Uh, that's the working student. And then the apprentice is like one tier higher. And that is going to include a monthly Zoom like lecture or interview with people, um, discussions. You know, I, I sometimes, you know, think about like, oh, it'd be fun to have like a town hall meeting and, you know, discuss training topics. I have, I mean, all kinds of different horses here from your fancy warm blood to your rescue pony and really everything in between. So that'll be great to, you know, talk about the topics that, you know, we all, you know, have to work on and worry about. Um, I tend to be an oversharer, so sorry in advance, <laughs> but I think it's important for everyone to know, like we all have things in our riding that we work on and we all have like certain habits that we've just had for a long time. And, um, you know, every rider needs lessons. And uh, so it'll be fun to share the things that I work on and the weaknesses in my riding, um, because I just think, you know, we're all human and we're all striving to get better. And that's really what this, you know, Team Tate TV is about, is this community of, you know, we love horses and we all wanna, you know, be better. So the third tier, um, which has a limited amount of spots and the wait list is growing. So we're only gonna take 20 spots of the trainer category. And that's gonna be, you'll get all the videos, you'll be on the Zoom uh, lecture, and then you'll also be able to send me videos and then I'll be able to review the video, um, kind of talk over the video and then we send it back to you. So it'll be um, like your own personal coaching, which will be really fun. And yeah, so the big news this week is um, the things that are coming up is Wednesday. I just lost one of my dearest horses. He was 35 years old, which I always tell Toy Trent, who cared for him, that there must be something in the water at her farm in Aiken that, you know, makes these horses just live in heaven forever because you know, it's beautiful green pastures. It's just a beautiful place. And Toy just has taken wonderful care of my old retired Grand Prix horses. And so we just lost Will last week. Um, I had just gone to visit him because I just knew I had to go see him. So we're going to have a nice tribute to him on Wednesday and then probably go live again and talk about loss and retiring horses and how to deal with that while we still stay focused on, you know, living our best life. So we're going to talk about that on Wednesday. And then for Team Taters, we are headed over to the Tryon show. Yay! We get, we, we, get, <laughs> we get to get off the farm, which would be great because we've just been here a lot thanks to Corona. But Corona was also the motivation to get this online, you know, academy going. So I can say I am too mad about it. And I've really actually enjoyed this time with my horses. I am 
cleaning in some stalls and I'm just home and I'm just here and it's just great to be around the horses so much. Um, so we're going to be taking um, Duke, which he's owned by Arthur Greenwood, Arthur and Jessica Greenwood, and he's a three-year-old stallion that Jessica Davis, um, a young horse expert, she's been riding since January. He is a wonderful, wonderful stallion, so we're excited to take him to his first horse show. So I'm sure there will be some lunging because you just never know what you get with a young horse, <laughs> which is why my four-year-old is not going because I kind of know what's going to happen. So we're, we're not ready. <laughs> um, uh, Teresa Schaefer is also going to show Isaac. She's going to make her third level debut with our rescue pony. So that's exciting. I mean, he's her rescue. He, I mean, he's her horse, but he's kind of ours because I kind of feel like every horse that's here is... Um, mine too. <laughs> so um, it's a collective, like we own him. Uh, so she's going to do her third level debut. So that'll be really fun. And then I'm taking uh, Darby, who's going to do a Grand Prix and a Grand... No, he's going to do an Intermediate 2 and his Grand Prix Freestyle. And he's owned by Kaki Vroom and Dean Wright. And then I'm also going to show Montana. And so he's going to do the Grand Prix Freestyle and also a Grand Prix. So we hope to see you at the horse show with social distancing and visit the website teamtateacademy.com and uh, get on the wait list. And thank you all so much for being part of this community. It just means so much. I've loved reading all of your posts and looking at all the pictures and God bless all the horse breeders out there that are part of the group. Um, I can't wait to get a discussion going with some of our judges that are on here. So that's fun. And yeah, I just am just thrilled to death that you're all here and this is going to be great. So have a great day and I'll see you soon. Okay, bye.